the challenges and more so being a teenager and the challenges while living abroad and we ask you guys to send in you know your experiences tell us how it is like being a teenager whether you're here or you have friends abroad sharing the experiences the good times the bad times the things that you wish um everyone else would really understand about being a teenager so do that on double two one six two start with the word a uh, circuit find us on twitter instagram and facebook at a circuit uh tv show so we we were just uh, having that dis discussion with blinds who was just telling us about you know his experience living in the uk so finally then you know after all this after two years he decided you know what i'm coming back home yeah. this is it so what really informed your decision to come back home? <coughs> i think the main thing was the fact that uh, I realized that I was on the wrong path mm -hmm. and wanted to change that. Mm -hmm. And changing it was easy, but accommodating that change was really hard for my friends mm -hmm. or the friends that I used to have. Mm -hmm. And so most of them would really ridicule me for having different standards. Mm -hmm. For example, they would want me to go out with them and I'm like, no, I'm, I'm done doing that. Yeah. I don't really want to do it anymore. It's not really satisfying to me. Yeah. And they couldn't accept that. And so most of them really thought that I was being <laughs> too much for them, that I was pretending to be someone I'm not mm -hmm. and all that. So it was really hard to fit in, yeah. like, on top of the fact that I'm in a different country. Yeah. Now the people that I thought would be my friends no longer like me the way they used to. Mm -hmm. And I realized that I needed to change my friends and I saw that they only needed me when I had something to bring to the mm -hmm. table. Like, if you're together and I don't have enough money for the Uber, I don't mm -hmm. have a bottle for the party, I don't have yeah. anything to bring, we're not friends anymore. Mm -hmm. And when that bottle is finished, when that Uber money is finished, when whatever it is is finished, we're not friends for a while. Like, yeah. we wouldn't talk to each other. Mm -hmm. So when I realized that that wasn't beneficial to me or healthy, mm -hmm. I moved on. But then living in that environment was still very difficult because mm -hmm. these are the same people I get to see every single day. Yeah. So I had to change that as well if I was to be successful. Mm -hmm. And one of the main things that I thought about was the fact that I was in a foreign country where people <coughs> like depended on me to give good answers. Mm -hmm. For example, in my art class, I was one of the most proficient people in English. Mm -hmm. and. That was really surprising to me because mm. I came to the UK exactly. where I should be like taught English. Yeah. But then I'm here like teaching yeah. some people how to speak. Yeah. And I'm, I, I speak three languages. Mm -hmm. I never thought that was something good until I went there and mm -hmm. realized some of these people speak only English mm -hmm. and they're not even that good at it. Mm -hmm. And it's not like I'm throwing shade or anything. <laughs> it's just the truth, what yeah. I got to see. Mm -hmm. And so I realized that it's not about where you are that mm -hmm. matters or the kind of teacher that teaches you or mm -hmm. the kind of facilities you have. There are people who will graduate from Kenyan universities mm -hmm. and be the best in whatever study field they're studying mm -hmm. and be the best in the world. Mm -hmm. And that is amazing. I don't need to have come with credentials from the UK yeah. to be seen as that guy is going to be an amazing architect. Mm -hmm. I can be an amazing architect wherever I am. Mm -hmm. um, and so that really motivated me <coughs> to come back and say you know what it doesn't matter i don't want to be in a place where i'm going to get good papers mm -hmm. but i know that i'm not going to be healthy inside mm -hmm. i'm not going to have a good mental yeah. mental state mm -hmm. and i'm going to live a completely fake life mm -hmm. i didn't like that mm -hmm. and also most importantly to reconnect with my family members and my true friends mm -hmm and get to share my story with them and tell them I know I messed up and I didn't listen to everything that you told me to mm -hmm. to do but this is me coming back and seeking your counsel once mm -hmm. again that's very humble yeah. <laughs> humble you know because that would be so difficult for a lot of people but then so now uh, you know when we were starting we said you're an artist you're a yeah. poet and he, I'm imagining all through this time up to the moment you made the decision to come back home and even when you came back home you still had some level of like depression so yeah. then how did you get um how did you work on that how did you relieve yourself of the depression so one of the main things that really helped me was this journal that i started writing mm -hmm. but a year after i'd been there i realized that all these people are not really helping me mm -hmm. because actually a friend of mine came to my room yeah. and really dissed me about my work like mm -hmm. i'd 
casually invited him to my house mm -hmm. and I was like oh now that you're here let me show you what I do like behind the scenes mm -hmm. and I showed him some of my art books and he said this is complete trash like, what what is this and for a long time I believed that I was a terrible artist yeah. until I thought about all those people who told me you're amazing mm -hmm. and like wondered why I was comparing this person just one person saying you're <coughs> bad yeah and like choosing that over about 50 people who told me I was good mm -hmm. so upon that realization I decided you know what I'm gonna keep to myself mm -hmm. and try cultivate these nice thoughts mm -hmm. and so I'll write a journal of you know good things that have happened or even the bad to mm -hmm. sort of like just remove all that yeah. and like have somewhere to vent it all out mm -hmm. so I started writing mm -hmm. and eventually like the one the one time actually I started drawing first mm -hmm. and then over summer, the <laughs> accommodations in the UK have this policy where they have to exile everyone mm -hmm. and refurbish all the rooms. Mm -hmm. So I was exiled for two weeks, mm -hmm. which to me didn't make sense because you're kicking me out of my only home. Yeah. I don't know where else I'm That's gonna go. Good. So I had to go to one of my friends' house mm -hmm. and stay there for two weeks. But now my routine of drawing every <coughs> single day, mm -hmm. of trying to be as creative as possible, was out of the table now because I can't now tell him, can I use your whole dinner table yeah. to just put like a piece of yeah. painting and yeah. do something. So I decided the next, be next best thing to do is write rhymes mm -hmm. because I love music mm -hmm. and I listened to a lot of people back then. So I just started writing small rhymes. And being on your phone is kind of like <laughs> a polite way of saying, I don't yeah, want to talk to you yeah. right now. So it really helped for me to kind of exclude myself, but still be around people who mm -hmm. I didn't want to talk to. Mm -hmm. And from that,